Alright guys, such a back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. With Seattle Surge failing to win a single respawn at the Prime Classic, the question has been raised, does this team need to blow it up? What change do you make if you do make a move though? Is it time that accuracy goes? There's plenty of other players that you could put into that role. Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Really upset the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that one. Plenty to dive into today. This other was kind of funny from Krebsix. But also this dimension real quick, just because for some reason they did the kind of top five plays of the prime classic as you might expect the cdl to do but um all of these are pro plays like yeah some of these were kind of nice but mohawk had a you know no doubt one of the most disgusting plays if not the best one of the event the one versus three game five of course for the tron torture academy to take down boston breach and put themselves in prime position at the time to qualify through to the brackets but um, they ended up not doing so because they lost 3-1 to the paris legion and lost on the tiebreaker front but interestingly enough none of those um you know all these clips right here you can see this methods one havoc's one or whatever like um yeah this one from scum I thought was kind of nice right here. Paul X as well made a nice play. And then I guess number one hit was here from Cami. But um, there was no plays from any amateurs here. Like, especially Mohawks, I'm not really sure how they missed that. So, not sure if this was a deliberate thing to avoid, like talking about the amateurs and stuff, because they want to make sure the teams that paid the $25 million get their respect. But um, yeah, I thought it was strange. You look at Pro and Classic, some great events from kind of challengers, amateur players, and uh, we're still not putting them in the thing. So, I thought that was somewhat unfortunate. Speaking of the comms, I thought this was kind of cool. We did look at this tweet yesterday, actually, when Crimson was kind of giving Paul X and Kismet their credit for what they've done to their team. As Paul X says, my goat, I'll never forget that speech. On to the next though, we are here now. So apparently Krim did some sort of speech or like, a, or whether maybe, or I don't know, it was Kismet or Paul X or someone did some sort of speech before one of their key games that got them in the right attitude. And it's like, well, as Krim says right here, bro, the CDL comms edition better cut that. Oh God, all my secrets will be revealed. I'll find you if you post it. So apparently Krim said something. I guess it was Krim based on this tweet to fire up the guys for their series or to, you know, to say something or other about how they're going to perform. And, um, and yeah, well, apparently there was some good entertainment in there. So hopefully the CDL puts it in there clip, even though, well, Crim might not be too happy about it. We'll see what that comes out over the coming days. This also from Sucker real quick, it was confirmed, of course, he kind of joined in setting place of Journey, the Rocker Academy. And with Rocker very much struggling at the Pro-Am, like, there has been some talk, okay, what are they going to do as a team? Like, is Havoc going to stay in this roster? Is Mage Maniac going to go? Is he going to come back? Like, is Priester going to go? Is it about time Priester goes? All this type of questions. And of course, you've also got the kind of Rocker Academy there. That, uh, well, Sucker is now on the team off. They've got Real over there, some other very talented Spanish players. It's going to be tough to put that entire team into the league or like put one of those players in because the communication, the language barrier could be a bit of a problem. But, um, you know, at the same time, they probably did sign these guys for a reason. So we'll keep an eye on that one. This also dimension real quick. So Electrify Steel, they have well, a seemingly of signs, the former Stallions roster effectively. So the Toronto Major is coming up in, well, not too long, of course, this week. Major 3 qualifiers begin. As soon as the qualifiers end, we're straight into Major 3 alongside another Challengers event. So there's definitely a reason for these teams and organizations to pick up Challengers rosters. But of course, well, one of them being this one, Clayson team right now. We'll talk about Clay here in a second just because if Seattle were to make a move and they needed a main assault rifle, like a, you know, main assault rifle IGL type figure, could Clay be that guy? I guess we might find out. He certainly wants to get a spot in the league. But yeah, their team was actually screaming London last night, so Clay, Fellow, Johnny and Ghosty. Map 1, they lost here on the Berlin, 250 to 180. But all the other maps, at least in this series of Seattle Scrim Intel points out, they won. So I think it was just four maps that we got to see. But um, yeah, Game 2 actually here was on the Bacage, where Clay drops 54 eliminations to win this game for them in the second well, here we are on Garuto as well, where Clay drops 31 eliminations, fellow has 41, but 250 to 155 up against the Opta guys. Zero similarly not having the greatest time here on this new SMG roll. Always a difficult time on Garuto, I'm sure. And then here we are on Tuscan, also Clay's team win it, right? So kind of interesting, not the greatest sign it must be said for this kind of a London change that we looked at slightly earlier today, with a Zero pulling out the full-time SMG, Harry on the full-time AR, Nasty on the flex. And yes, it's just scrims, but pretty impressive, I thought, from Clay, so getting some decent results out of this team already, to be honest, given that, you know, of course, the only few days that he's been playing with them. So it could be a, certainly a scary challenges team, but of course if Clay gets an opportunity back in the league, and we said going into this past weekend's Prime Classic that like a Clay reckoned that he was frying so hard in these trials that he did with New York apparently that if they struggled and if they flopped again he might actually get put back in. Of course the way things have transpired, that's certainly not going to be the case anymore, so he's going to have to try and find an opportunity elsewhere. Could that opportunity be on at the likes of a Seattle Surge? Minnesota Rocker might also be chalked, but certainly I think the most underwhelming team for me was Seattle Surge. I had them maybe, like I thought they would get out of their 
groups instead of Tronto. I thought they could make a decent run, maybe even to the grand finals or to top four. Certainly wasn't the case at all. You're not going to win any series if you can't win a single respawn. And even as attached as yesterday, you're either an asset or you're a liability. And accuracy hits the reply to this one. And of course, the oldest three players in the league right now, Slasher, Scump, and Cribsix have all won an event this season. And as so well, Phoenix says here, the coach of the Seattle Surge, got to get Lamar one, that being accuracy one now, so he can join the club. You've got to avoid me in the bracket then. These guys kind of having a little bit of a back and forth. But of course, this event was absolutely tragic for Seattle Surge. Three in nine map counts in their group. Strike X were considered to be the worst Changes team coming in here. Gunsy, Silly, Fire, and Rambi. Like, um, you know, and of course they take down Seattle Surge 3-1. Seattle only win the search in this series and strike win all the respawns. Like, that's completely unacceptable. Usually what we see against the amateur squads is that the amateur teams can win, like, search and destroys and stuff, but taking respawns, taking hard points is usually a big struggle against the pros. That was the opposite issue here and Seattle just completely collapsed. Like, they're so up and down, it's crazy. One map, Sib, Pren, and Mac are going off. Another map, they're not. And, um, you know, accuracy is never going to give you those crazy numbers that are going to maybe help you get over line in situations like that. And that's why the suggestion has been made. Is it time that accuracy gets dropped from this team? Do we need to blow it up again? Because other teams that have blown it up have, of course, seen some success. And if you do blow it up, who do you bring in in place of accuracy? Everyone that's blown it up is looking pretty good. Yeah, Pat, you got to think. Maybe people got to listen to you more, Pat. Yeah, yeah. A, couple, a couple more teams might have to blow it up. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah? Like, like who, Pat? Like who? I mean, off the top of my head, you know, Seattle. That's no, the one team man. Thinking, uh, they didn't want to respawn this event. They didn't want to nah, respawn. They look pitiful, you bro. Think, you think they were the most under underwhelming team this weekend? I, I would I would say, yeah. But at the same time, I personally didn't have high hopes for them as a team. Like, I know they're very up and down. So, <laughs> um, I, yeah, they just look bad, like really bad. I don't think I was going to expect them to look as bad as they did, but... We know that they can compete with the likes of FaZe and Ionoptic. They're, they they have that potential and they've shown it at times. But then they just come out on the weekend and they just they're, they just were nothing. They just did nothing. Like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is about Seattle. I don't know what they got to do to get there because I've said it before. I look at the team and I'm like, what the even change it's like you picked up the you know some of the three best challenger players at points in their you know their would, challenger careers what the hell do you do to make them better I, I, Who I do you try, replace what do you i would do? try swapping out lamar first um just giving a little bit more consistent slaying uh power uh, there's obviously a lot of players we can talk of and i think regardless of seattle there's teams like or sorry players like what's gonna happen with gunless right is he able to play is he gonna come True. back to the lag team is he gonna come back to a different team if possible they're scrappy from the Toronto Ultra Jeez, That Academy guy team. needs to get picked up, bro. That, guy, that guy has to. actually disgusting. He's and gross. Then and then there's Major Maniac, right? Like, there's, there's that's three really good players that I can think of off the top of my head. So despite the very solid start to the season Seattle Surge hat, when I went to look at their kind of schedule history here on Concapedia, like I think it's now called Phantom or whatever, but like, I mean, look how many losses they have. It's actually quite remarkable. They started the season so well, getting to the grand finals of the kickoff classic. They started Major 1 with a fair few victories as well. Then after that, they went on a five loss streak. They then beat Atlanta FaZe. I like, got a crazy. They lost five series in a row, beat FaZe, then lost two more, then beat beat Thieves and Optic and then lost another five series in a row since then, especially the ones, I mean, to, like, look, the losses to FaZe and Ultra, like, um, you know, maybe excusable, but the loss to Strike X is just absolutely absurd. Yes, at that point, they were out of the tournament, but, like, um, it's not a good look at all for this team going forwards. Such a strange team because they've proven this season they can beat FaZe and Optic both, but yet they can't seem to beat teams they should certainly be beating. Of course, the LAG series and the FaZe series are a bit tough because Mac was unwell, and that's why I kind of thought going into this Pro-Am, they might have more potential than they showed at that event. But, um, you know, Seemingly that wasn't the case at all, got completely destroyed. So if that is the case, what do you do? Like, um, it's really tough to say, because Mac, I would say, has probably been their best performer this season. Like, I think he's been somewhat underrated in what he's brought to the squad. Prid and Sib are kind of both these, you know, potential, very much star power talents. But it must be said, the last few weeks, none of them, like, neither of them have really set the world on fire compared to what they were doing right at the start of the season. This, I just have filtered here on, on BreakingBoy.gg, based on Major 2 and the Prime Classic, just to see kind of the stats over the past month and a little bit, pretty much the last month or so. This is what it looks like. Accuracy with a 0.83 and a half points. Sip though only with a 0.91. Mac and Predator at the ones positive. We look at search and destroy. Accuracy has a 0.92. In control, it's Mac with a 0.86. Probe with a 0.96. So kind of tough to say. But in terms of accuracy compared to other main ARs, like I'm like, there's no real other main AR that's dropping numbers like this in the league. And the thing is that accuracy usually is, um, is capable of getting like so much more out of the rest of his team that he can get away with that, right? He can make sure the other guys are playing at a really high level. Therefore, he doesn't need to drop crazy numbers. But in this game, it doesn't really seem like 
you can get away with that, right? A lot of main assault rifles, the best teams in the world, they like to, you know, optic, let's just say optic and phase because those two teams are still number one, number two, probably, despite, uh, you know, all the chaos that's gone on the last few weeks. They have ARs in Dashi and Selium that are turning up to these tournaments and dropping 1.2s and they've still got great SMG players. It seems like in order to be a consistent top dog, you need like a dominant main assault rifle force on your team, especially in this title. And if you don't have that, then you're going to have a very difficult time. Accuracy doesn't drop those crazy numbers and he isn't really seemingly, despite maybe the, the chemistry or like the leadership or whatever we bring to this team, getting the best out of the rest of those guys. So that does raise the question, what do you do with this team? Is it time you make a move for accuracy? But of course, the challenge is what move do you actually make there, right? Because accuracy does bring a lot of leadership and intangibles. That is, um, you know, pretty well renowned in the community, to be honest. Who do you bring in, right? Could you bring in a guy like, I mean, they're talking about Major Maniac, they're talking about Gunners. He could maybe be the main AR over there. That, I guess, is an option. Like, Scrappy was also mentioned as potentially someone who wants to be in the league, or of course, he wants to be in the league, and it probably should be in the league. But can he bring what this team needs? Maybe not, right? So that's why I was thinking maybe a guy like Clayster, we just saw what he was doing with that team, like, um, could be a good option, right? And Clay definitely feels like he's got life left in him. Like, maybe Clayster for accuracy, you give that a go. You try and get Clay on loan for the couple months of the season from the subliners, take his contract over for a few months and try and make that work and see if, you know, Clay can get revenge on Crimson or whatever and take down them in some series. I'm not really sure, but uh, yeah, to me, I don't think the Seattle Surge are going to be a consistent top dog. They might somehow fluke like another top four, even grand finals or something, or even beyond, right? But, um, you know, they're not going to be a consistent contender, probably with accuracy in the team, at least on this title. Definitely intrigued to your thoughts on what they should do in the comment section below. A couple of things here to finish up with. On this day in 2014, Fizzip joined Strictly Business and they would knock out the Optic Nation team of Miracles, Killer, Ricky and Embos to finish top eight in this tournament. So yeah, just honestly looking back at Ghost, it's just some, some crazy stuff that happened in COD history. This also, if you guys missed this yesterday, we premiered another documentary. It was on Slash after the incredible Los Angeles Grillers tournament run. This thumbnail is absolutely unbelievable that Roosevelt made as well. It's just absolutely superb. But yeah, story of Slash's career, from, it's like 45 minutes long from his inception all the way through the present day. So if you guys haven't watched that yet, do check it out because it really is an absolute banger. The script that me and Dabs read is like four and a half thousand words and then the you know, documentary as well. Took a long time to edit, so would really appreciate your guys' support on that one over at the Breaking Point channel. And just to mention this, a little teaser really, just I'm not going to really discuss the matchups too in depth, but these are the games that are starting just this Friday, right? So we're back in business again in just a few days here with the major three qualifiers starting once again. But very much intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. Tell us your YouTube gods. This is a good video. I just like you should see it as well and hope grow the competitive call to the community. Thank you guys as always. Take care of yourselves and I will see you next time. Jcap. Oh my god. Wait, how are you doing this so bad? That's Jcap. On his first day of school, look at <laughs> That's Jcap. Yeah, that's Cap, a 100%. That's our ex teammate. <laughs> it literally looks like him yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jcap. Is it? Oh, it is. I can't believe that hit me. Shout out Jcap.